Hi, hello, welcome. My name is Harley Watson and you're listening to Pink Prose. This is a show where I stick my head out of my laptop and into a mic and ask some questions with the writers of today who are not only doing the damn thing, but they've done the damn thing. They are published authors. I'm a receptionist by day, I'm based here in Huddersfield, and I'm a writer by quite literally any scrap of time I get. Like any opportunity I find to crack open that laptop, I do. I've been endlessly typing away for the last eight or nine months now, all working towards what seems like some beautiful and impossible castle in the sky of getting a book published. And actually, you know, the writing's not what's hard in this game because that's an addiction. What's hard is remembering to eat and sleep and go outside, all because I'd much rather bang a couple more hours out on my laptop than doing stuff like washing my hair. Because I am in that liminal space right now. I'm almost there with my manuscript, almost ready to start sending out to agents, but not quite. But I'm ready for the doom of it all to set in because I don't actually know anything about getting published. No formal education in English, creative writing, no writer friends, no experience, like nothing. Just a girl with a laptop that's learned everything from the internet. And now I want to finally talk to someone who's actually walked that walk. Pink Prose is produced by the wonderful people at Kirkley's Local TV in partnership with Huddersfield Lit Fair, so I'm not just here to serve my own anxieties. I'm here for all you writers at home, whether you've just opened up that fresh Word doc or you're on the brink of an existential breakdown because of the Word doc you opened eight months ago, Pink Prose aims to settle some of the peace from the panic. So before we bring on our guest for some wiser words, here's some of mine. Go enjoy your existential breakdowns because I know full well you're having them. Enjoy every minute of the insanity because there's so much madness in this magic and it'll all eventually become its own nostalgia. So while you won't find my name at this year's Lit Fest, you will find our guests. With me today is the lovely and talented Rebecca Ryan author of My Extraordinary Life and The Philosophy of Love, who is here to help shed some light on what exactly can writers expect in the big wide world of publishing and where do I begin? (laughs) So, Rebecca, welcome. How are you? Yes, very good. Thank you. Thank Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you so much for being here. Um, So, in your own words, can you just tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I'm Rebecca, or Bex, unless I'm in trouble with my mum, <laughs> um, and I live in Bradford. I'm, like you said, I'm the author of two books, My Extraordinary Life and The Philosophy of Love, um, which are published with Simon & Schuster. Um, I used to be a teacher, mm-hmm. so that was kind of where I started. I was a history teacher for 12 years, wow. um, and but I'd kind of always written, always enjoyed writing. Um, hadn't really thought about doing it professionally um, but yeah when I had my daughter I was like oh you know it's sort of now or never type yeah, thing yeah. Um, and so I thought I would yeah I feel like I'm at that point yeah, yeah yeah I think you get to the point where it's like I'd had an idea for a book a long time ago but only in the sense that I thought oh that would be a good idea mm-hmm. I hope someone else writes it and then sort of 20 years later I was like no one has written that idea still yeah, like maybe, maybe I should do it um mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I was just, it just kind of went from there, really. I was quite lucky with how it all panned out. Yeah. Um, and I left teaching a couple of years ago, and now I just write full time. That's so. amazing. Congratulations, because that's you. a hard step for yes. writers, even published authors. Yeah, it was. still working full time. Yeah, it was very scary, but it's for the best, and, and I'm very lucky. So I want to start with your publishing story because that's the level that I'm at right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. And that's what I'm stressing about. <laughs> Haven't sent anything out there just yet. Yeah. And I'm already slightly spiraling <laughs> yeah. at the thought of it. Yeah. So let's start with your first book. Uh-huh. Did you have a full book when you were sending queries out? Yes. So I actually got, when I, when I decided I was going to start to write, because I was a history teacher, I taught secondary school history, I sort of thought, oh, well, that's what I should write. Um, I should write historical fiction for middle grade, which is kind of like um, just younger than young adult. Um, So I wrote um, a really awful middle grade historical fiction book. um, Can you stop for a second? 
with me being new to this whole writing industry mm. I suppose so when you say middle grade because I've had to learn a lot uh-huh. of terms that yeah. I don't know so yeah what does middle grade mean so it just means for readers that are kind of 7 to 13 right so okay. this was like upper middle grade so it was like kids who were in year seven at school basically uh-huh. which was what I was teaching so it made sense to me to to write that yeah um, even though I didn't actually love writing historical fiction like I don't have the patience for it at all um, but I wrote a 20,000 word manuscript which looking back was like actually appalling <laughs> it was so bad wow. um, but it was obviously good enough because I got an agent with that actually oh, you did? Okay. yeah so I got an agent with that so people say did I have a full manuscript like yes. technically yes I yeah. did um but no one is gonna buy a book no publisher is gonna buy a book that's 20,000 words long like yeah. it needed to at least double in length yeah um which it did do so my agent I got an agent with that I got an agent quite was it an easily easy process yeah for you? it was quite easy yeah it, she was very like I sent it off to six initially Um, And she was, I think she was like the third one to come back to me. I think that's it though, isn't it? It's some people can take a year finding an agent and then other times it's like, no, got one in two weeks, responded immediately. Yeah, it was real straightforward. I was still on maternity leave. um, But, you know, that was in 2017 and my book didn't come out. The book that I got a deal with didn't come out until 2023. So mm-hmm. I had it kind of the other way around. A lot of people, I think, take a long time to get an agent and, and apply to like, and have like a hundred, you yeah. know, rejections under their belt, which I didn't have that. But then that book didn't sell. I didn't get a deal with that book. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I don't, I, I didn't actually enjoy writing historical fiction mm-hmm. or for children. Yeah. So I did a complete U-turn and yeah. wrote a book for adults. Um, I kept my agency, so I was lucky that I could stay with the same agency. Um, but that took a long time because I had other children in between, which slowed me down. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I got an agent quite quickly. But then my, pro, you know, my journey to getting a book deal was actually That's long, very long. <laughs> that does. I had a question about that actually because it's not the rejection that scares me. It's what you've just said, which is like being on submission. Yeah. And editing and reworking stuff like that, like you have the security yeah. of an agent. Yes. But then it's that long, drawn out process. Yeah. Everything. Afterwards. Yeah. I mean, and it, it's so different because, my, like I said, I was a teacher before and teaching is really fast paced. Yeah. You know, your day is <clears throat> regimented, it's broken down into five hours. You know, if we advertise for a position as a teacher, you put out the advert and then you get someone the next week you know it's it's really really fast paced and publishing is not like that it is incredibly slow like I got my deal in 2021 and my book didn't come out for two years Mm -hmm. and I was like yeah I'm gonna be an author and everyone was like when's your book coming out and I was like oh in in two years yeah Yeah. writing takes a long time yeah everyone was like what and I'd written it by that point it was pretty much done it just took two years to do everything else is really really slow mm-hmm. and you kind of have to just yeah I'd rather just have a straight up rejection and just someone yeah. tell me no rather than the way yeah game. well I that's don't need that. yeah and I think rejections come quickly because someone can look at something Fine, and be like yeah, no. reject me quickly please <laughs> so you weren't actually querying for that long then no I wasn't in both instances so I got my agent quite quickly a couple of weeks and then by the time I'd actually written the adult book and we'd sent it on submission um, yeah, I think we got an offer in a, within, in a week. So it was really quick. I mean, it was sort of frenzied and a bit scary and a lot's going on behind the scenes. And it, it's by that point, you know, you're so close. Uh-huh. You're so close to getting there. Yeah, the the yeah, stakes are incredibly I high. Yeah. I think I just locked myself in a bedroom with yeah. my little boy and was on a rocking chair, kind of going backwards and forwards, just like panicking the whole time. I've already planned out as soon as I like send all my queries out to agents, I'm going on holiday. That's a good because idea. Because I can't sit yeah. around in real life and be yeah. looking at my phone yeah. constantly. Yeah, well, you need to set up a separate email. That's Don't what I tell it. Yes, it. that's it. Because I had my main email, and I'd be like, oh, an email, and it would just feel like another like promotional yeah, thing. Yeah, no from... my Harley Ellis one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. We're not yeah. going there. So from landing a deal, then to the shelves, that's like a three-year process. So it doesn't I doesn't always have to be that. No, way, it doesn't have it? to, and it depends on the publisher. Like the bigger publishers, because they're they publishing so many 
titles each year yeah, you know you, you're kind of a cog in a machine mm -hmm. um, I think two years is, is pretty extreme they wanted to bring my first book out in a January because mm -hmm. it has a kind of anti-new year's resolution message to it yeah um, and it was going to be too soon it was going to be too quick to bring yeah. it out in 2022 so that's why it was pushed for 2023 but I think generally you're looking at 18 months for the bigger publishers mm -hmm. um a year maybe nine months for mm -hmm. some of the smaller presses or the digital ones the mm -hmm. digital ones are much quicker you know they can do it in kind yeah. of six months yeah but bookshops and supermarkets buy their titles that they're going to stock six months in advance. So, you, you know, it's a kind of knock-on effect mm -hmm. um, and it slows everything down. You just need to, whatever your expectations are, you need to add six months on to <laughs> yeah, it. No, I've already learned that now at this point because I'm like, hmm, will I be sending these emails out at the end of this month? Like, it's just time's just a relative yeah. thing. you like really, really close and then you just turn another corner and it's like, yeah. oh, that's just another month. Yeah. Yeah. added so what were the hardest experiences for you in all of this just that waiting game and the waiting was tricky um i think the hardest thing was writing book two to be R honest because, well it's that second yeah like, the book second book or whatever. <laughs> yes it was it was traumatic and and like i said the adult book that i wrote i'd had the idea for it decades ago so, yeah so by the time yeah. i actually wrote it it was quite cathartic Starting from that blank yeah exactly <laughs> but then book two was like write another book and i was like what i've just written one leave me alone yeah um and i felt like i didn't know how to write one i'd never written you know mm -hmm. before the middle grade i'd never done any creative yeah. writing yeah um i didn't feel like i knew yes, what i was it. doing no at experience. all um so i rewrote book two mm -hmm. like 80 times yeah um so I, I always say that I think that's the book that kind of taught me how to write. So I'm proud of it now. Mm. But at the time, I was just like, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah. And I'd that's... go on and look at teaching jobs online and be like, maybe I should just go back to that. No, no, that's the magic of <laughs> writing, though, because you don't know where it's going to take you. Yeah. And it's just yeah. Like it kind of writes itself, yeah. actually. Yes, it does, yeah. Did you always want to go for a top five? No. Or were you just like, just give me yeah. anything? Yes, yeah. I used to joke to my agent and be like... Um, or, you know, I don't even care if they pay me. And she'd yeah, be like, ha ha, yeah, we definitely, yeah. She, and she'd be like, ha ha, no, we need them to pay yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, <kind of laughs> like stop it, well. yeah. And then I had a couple of publishers who pit, who wanted it and I met, so I met three different editors mm -hmm. and I'd be kind of smiling away on the Zoom because it was yeah. locked down and we yeah. couldn't actually meet. And my agent would be texting me, stop smiling, they're going to give us less money. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think a couple of my, well, one of my offers for definite was for a digital press. Mm -hmm. I would have probably taken anything. Yeah. Um, but because there were different offers, it mm -hmm. kind of helped generate interest yeah. and... Um, and I do think you get stability being with a bigger publisher. You do, do you? Yeah. So that's the, that's, that's the ideal, but at the time, I didn't know enough about it to even know that, you know, that this was a thing that yeah. people kind of strove for. Yeah. I was yeah. just like, well, whatever. Well, very lucky then. That's good, I suppose, not going in with an ideal because I have an ideal and I'm like, this is what I want. I'm yeah, in the Simon and Schuster publishing deal now. Yeah, well, I mean, there's pluses and minuses. It is, yeah. you know, I feel like I was very naive and I was lucky that it all worked out. I think actually I probably needed to have had more knowledge mm -hmm. about the industry and mm -hmm. have been more involved with it, you know, before. But were you open with them about your naivety? Because I have some drafts of my um, like manuscript emails and I've kind of put that in. Like, I don't know what I'm doing apart yeah. from what I've written yeah that's all I know yeah 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 I was I was honest about I'd it you could, honest yeah about it. I think you, you are better to be because you you're know, gonna look full away. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly and don't that. yeah and and I think some in some ways they prefer that from a debut yeah. author because they can yeah. kind of you know encourage you along a certain way they can kind of mold you and, and give you advice and I work really closely with my publicist and you know I feel like she appreciates that I'm open to whatever yeah. she suggests. I've not yeah. come in with my own agenda or my own ideas yeah. um, because I don't have any, <laughs> mostly. Yeah, no I'm just willing to do whatever they tell me notions. to do. And I just say yes to everything because it's all new to me and, yeah. well, l slightly less new now, but it has been all new to me. And so I've yeah. really enjoyed, I think they've enjoyed and I've enjoyed like learning together yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Right, well... I'll take that on board. I wasn't. You you said the one thing that scared. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Which I didn't think, which was that whole like 
you landed an agent early, but then you had to do that long wait, yeah. which kind of terrifies me. But at the same time, if I land an agent, I'll probably be so happy that I won't. Yeah, at that's the same it. Time. And I th- and I think by the time probably writing's hard because you don't you you very rarely have someone else saying to you like you are good, keep yeah. going. Yeah. And I think if I hadn't had my agent, I would yeah. have quit probably. Yeah. Like yeah. at the point I had three kids at one point and I don't know how you do I was, that I, <laughs> I struggle with time because I'm working full time yeah. which a lot of writers do but yeah. then I was reading some interviews with you like I've got three kids and I'm like yeah how yeah I don't I, now I have no idea to be honest how? um I mean I never imagined doing that yeah I mean it was lockdown and we were all yeah, sort of still. there was nothing else to do basically still. um but yeah I think it's it is hard but you know, you just you just make it's time. If you hard, want to do it, yeah, you just completely. do it. Like you sacrifice other yeah, things. Like we just ate takeaways for like yeah. a year straight. No, I can't remember the yeah. last time I went out. Yeah, to exactly. Be That's it. But and I'm willing to sacrifice. But when you have an agent, you have someone else saying, like, this is good, keep going. And that is so important in writing mm-hmm. to meet other people that yeah. are gonna give you that encouragement. Because I, yeah, I would have quit. I had yeah. too much else on, really. Yeah. It was not practical to be making a career move at that time in reality. Because I had an agent, she was like, keep going. I think there's an idea in this. I think it's good. And so that kind of nudged me on. And she was a professional as well, yeah. you know. And I, so I think getting an agent, lots of people see getting an agent as the most important step. And I would 100% agree you've got someone in the industry who says yes like you can do it we believe that you can do it yeah. and they have faith when you don't just when you're about to get like knocked down by your own mind exactly. they pull you yes exactly right because exactly. you exist in that yes back yeah. for so long yeah. it's just you you're in publishing land once you've screen. got an agent you're in publishing land yeah big confidence yes exactly thing. yeah We'll see what happens because I'm so close now. I'm just taking, I've booked a week off work. Exciting. I'm hoping in that week we're going to finish the manuscript and get it out. I mean, there's still got a long way to go, but. There's always more. I need some feedback. I did give it to my harshest critic of a friend, Mm -hmm. and she was like, please don't do this to me. Because you know I I will give you an honest answer. And then I was like, that's exactly why, but then she turned to me and was like, yeah, my mum said my good. my mum read my manuscript for my my, my extraordinary my life and said it was quite good. <laughs> the mum's probably the hardest. <laughs> yeah. um, so I just want to get your opinion on some of cultural issues surrounding writers today, specifically in the north, mm-hmm. because your books have a northern voice mm-hmm. to them, uh, which is similar to myself. So how does the northern voice find its place at a publishing house like Simon and Schuster? Do mm-hmm. they? Do they know what they're doing with it? Do they edit it out? No, I, yeah, it or anything? no. I think. I mean, I think I've been again really lucky that you know my editor is. She does kind of champion voices from people in different parts mm-hmm. of the UK. Um, so she's she, even though she is from London, she you know she lives in London now. She's not massively London centric mm-hmm. with the projects that she takes and my agent knew that when she pitched it to her she knew she was looking for um you know for for stories from not just London basically Mm -hmm. so it's kind of luck but also kind of my agent doing her job that I've ended up with an editor who Mm -hmm. was willing to take on um you know authors who don't live in London Mm -hmm. so I felt like she's been a real champion of Mm -hmm. it actually um, and Simon and Schuster, as a publishers, do do a lot yeah. outside London. Well, like, they're yeah, massive. Yeah, they global. are. Yeah, and they, you know, they sponsor Bradford Lit Fest, so right. they do do a lot outside of London. Um, there's been like a fun, a few instances where, you know, my second book is set in Easington Colliery in the northeast. And there's a bit of, you know, my character goes on the bus. I also have a bit um, of that. But yeah. Of, um, south and north. Yeah, versus. yeah. Yeah, well, I think I think the North has kind of a unique humour. Yeah. Think. And I think yeah. that can be hard to, mm-hmm. you know, for people from London sometimes to understand. Yes. And she was a bit like, 
I'd be really interested to see how the buses work in Easington Colliery. And I'm like, they're just a bus. They work the same as they work everywhere else. There's been a few things, but she can laugh at herself. Okay. And I, you know, we'll laugh at it together. I mean, and we've, we, I've been lucky again that I've had the same editor for all of my books. Um, for, and, you know, for any that might be coming, I've got the same editor. Um, so we work closely yeah. together now. Um, and we have a good relationship and we can kind of laugh basically if she suggests something that's very very London Um, but I think publishing in general is it remains incredibly London centric yeah I think slowly it's Mm -hmm. starting to change Mm -hmm. Um, there are some northern you know there are more northern authors now than there used to be Um, I think it's still harder because there isn't that ready-made network Mm -hmm. of Mm-hmm. you know of of people doing the same thing as you but equally I think on the flip side of that you know as a London author I'm not saying you're 10 a penny but there's a lot more of them it's whereas, a bigger competition it's a bigger suppose, competition whereas yeah. it, I feel like in the north people like I've had so many like bookshops and lit fests and events because people really get behind local community. authors yeah and that's behind, that's really yeah. really nice yeah. you know I go to my old school the where I went when I was younger in yeah. Hartlepool and yeah. do sessions there and and it's you know they they those kids want to read stories set in somewhere that they recognize yeah um so I think slowly publishing is changing and and as more books come out that are set in the north and do well mm-hmm. it's only going to encourage them yeah to do that more and more yeah so hopefully it's we're on the right trajectory even if they're not there yet yeah absolutely completely well i think that's all we have time for but thank you so much for being here um before we go i just want to ask you even for published authors with two books under belts it's still a hard process so what's the one thing that you would say to yourself for book number three yeah well um, are you writing book number three i've written book number three yeah okay yeah well this is yeah it's all kind of in the process is it being edited and everything it's being right edited now, now okay. hopefully yeah knocking them out yeah, My <laughs> yeah goodness. Not, it does feel like i'm knocking them out yeah um i think the best piece of advice i give to myself or any author is that you have to remember that it's a lot of luck you know yeah. it's so easy to take judgments and rejections personally and to see them as a, a you know a kind of reflection on you as a person or you as a writer when often it isn't often there's so many factors yeah. that are beyond our control yeah. what the market's doing what people are reading you know it, there's so many things that influence that you have to remember that there's a lot of luck because even if you're successful you have to remember that it's been luck because otherwise you just have an yeah. enormous ego and be completely unbearable you know you have to remember it's luck and all that you can do is concentrate on the words that are on the page on your you know the only thing in your control is what you write and so I would remind myself that that's the only thing I can control and the only thing I should focus on and remember that the rest is luck it's a hard blow when you've been writing something so for hard. like a year or so 18 hard. months and yeah. it's just like some people's it's, they've never seen it's never seen the light of day yeah and again like you said purely bad luck yeah exactly. not because of that's the it. yeah the writing you, yes that's it you can't take it personally and it's often i see so many great books mm-hmm. you know they don't get anywhere yeah. but yeah. all you can do so. is make the writing as good as you can and hope that yeah. you know the rest falls into place yeah there is some stories that i've been reading up about people's work they lost on submission but then they've like reworked it a little bit and then like five years later yeah it's gone out that's and it's it. done its thing that's and... it things change market trends change you know you have to write the right thing at the right time um and that is luck yeah. more than anything it's all luck baby okay no yeah. <laughs> It's not great advice, but unfortunately, it's very realistic, yes, it isn't is. it? You yeah. just have to be like, yeah, just keep going. Keep going. Keep being tenacious. Yes. Yeah. And where can readers keep up with you as well before we go? Yep, I'm on Instagram. I'm Bex Ryan Author mm-hmm. on there. Mm-hmm. And I'm on Twitter, but not on would Twitter, it, yeah. On X, whatever it's called yeah. now. But we I mean, it's like name. a tumbleweed of my profile. I'm the same. Other profile. I'm the same. There's I think nothing on my there. My last Instagram post was from 2022. And I'm like, we need to cut that out because. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
if you want your book to survive a little bit yeah there's a really good community pushing. of book people on instagram yeah um it's very friendly on there mm-hmm. so yeah i use instagram a lot good for connections x yeah. very much less so which is yeah i can't remember when my last tweet was yeah i don't think i should probably delete that actually yeah before. i probably should delete that. Yes. yeah so in if you've got any questions about the publishing process you can catch rebecca along with author charlotte furnace at the lawrence batley teepees on the 25th of April, so go and book yourself a place at hoodlipfest.org.uk and support Northern Voices in the community.